right, so good evening. Uh, my name is Mr. Turner, the superintendent of Harrisburg School District. Uh, Co-presenting with me today will be Jeff Straw. Uh, he's the chief engineer of the project. So um, we have been talking about Still Elementary School now for several months. And uh, it was placed on the board agenda uh, to move forward with the project over the summer in August. Um, we've been doing a lot of work in terms of planning with that. And now we want to start having a conversation with the community about why Steel Elementary School? Why are we moving forward with the project? Also to give you an idea of what the school potentially would look like. So, why Steel Elementary? Uh, one of the things when we, go to the next time. Um, one of the things when we, uh, when I came on board about a year and a half, uh, we were told with COVID to talk about three things. How are we going to prevent, prepare, and respond? So, in taking that information, uh, we wanted to really get a clear picture of the district and where the district was at at that standpoint. So the first area we looked at is our youngest scholars. So how were students who were entering kindergarten, what did that look like a year and a half later after COVID? So this will give you a clear picture of the district over the past two years. So before COVID, Approximately anywhere between 50 and 60 students in the area of literature were, were coming to school significantly below level. COVID hits a year and a half out. And when you start talking through people in the community in terms of your daycare centers, drastic reduction in the amount of students who were going into their programs. So fast forward to last year and this year, eight out of 10 kindergarten students are significantly below level entering kindergarten. You take that number, and if those students never get an opportunity to get caught up, then what do you look at the picture of those students five, 10, 12 years down the road? So that was area number one, which very much was a big concern of us as a district. Area of math. Mathematics before COVID was about 40%, significantly below level when it comes to numeracy and math. Fast forward, we hit COVID, you're talking about six out of 10 kindergarten students who are not on level or near level entering kindergarten two years later after COVID. So that was data point number one. Data point number two. Our configuration for our middle schools was grades five to eight last year. So in terms of looking at some of the data for fifth grade students and your middle schools being to a certain degree overcrowded, we started to say, what was the difference between a fourth grade student and a fifth grade student? So we looked at three data points. Number one is we looked at their attendance. A fourth grade student, their attendance was about 85% by the end of the year. Throughout the course of the year, it was anywhere between two to four percentage points lower going from one grade to the next. The next data point you look at is the number of suspensions. So it almost quadruples going from one grade level to the next. Fourth grade to fifth grade. So in terms of discussion, looking at root cause, looking at concerns, we'll be placing elementary students, fifth graders, and middle school and with the impact of them being at Roland, Camp Curtin, Marshall Ave. The impact of fifth grade students there. So when you look at their data, from an academic standpoint, you were looking at going from fourth grade to fifth grade, the drastic dip in their academic performance as a fourth grade student going to fifth grade. So those were two of the big key factors that we were looking at in terms of saying, what are some possibilities and what were some things that we needed to do? So before I turn it over to Jeff, you had Roland and his enrollment was probably about between seven and 800. Cam Curtin's enrollment at that point in time was roughly about 600 or more. So you had scholars, five through eight, stuffed in your middle schools. You're looking at your elementary school at that point in time. You're looking at kids coming in significantly below level and then now, a decision was made to move fifth grade back to the elementary school. When you do that, what it took 
is you're now talking about the utilization of space in buildings and the percentage that went up. And Jeff's gonna get an opportunity to go through the feasibility report so you can see the building utilization now with the amount of scholars in our elementary schools. So we as a district want to A, aggressively go after pre-K, aggressively go after early learning. Right now we have no space, okay? You have no Rose that has no space. You have Scott that has no space. You have Foos that has limited space, okay? You have Ben Franklin that has no space. So we have your elementary schools now, if we want to really start going after our youngest people and our youngest scholars, we don't have the space to do so. So Jeff is going to take this part over and start talking about the feasibility part of it. And he's also then going to get into what the elementary school, Steel Elementary School, potentially would look like within the next year and a half. Jeff? Thanks, Mr. Turner. Um, so we're going to go through both just uh, where have we sort of the progression over the last six months um, and then where we're going from here. Uh, we will talk about the floor plans, we're going to touch on the feasibility study, uh, and then ultimately just talk about the schedule for uh, uh, bringing uh, Steel Elementary fully online. So we started roughly about a year ago and it was just analyzing the existing building. You've got a, a three-story building. Uh, but really probably the, the strong takeaway was every, other than uh, the, the gym cafeteria and the administration, all the blue that you see on the screens, every, every room in the building was set up as classrooms. And that's important. Uh, there was really no breakout small group or spaces for small group instruction, uh, learning support, and, and that was a large discussion from early on in the project. We were also looking at um, enrollment for really across all the buildings uh, in, in the district. Uh, this is an example of Melrose, Melrose and just how is the building being used today? Um, and, and really that changes year to year, sometimes even month to month, of taking a snapshot of the school district and how is each building being utilized? And then what is the capacity? So an example is uh, Melrose currently as it's laid out, uh, and being at, with bringing the fifth grade down is at, at roughly at 115 percent capacity. Um, so, it, how how did we potentially uh, start talking about bringing steel elementary online that, that we could start to pull down those enrollments in each of the buildings? And this is sort of a, a snapshot um, a capacity analysis of, of all the elementary schools. So, looking at Ben Franklin, Downey, Foose, Melrose, and Scott, and the enrollments running from 112, 90, 82, 115, 106. Um, so really what that was telling us was that every building was at full capacity or beyond. Typically, there, there's different rules of thumb, but at, at an elementary for the state, that they recommend roughly 85, 90% uh, capacity that you have a little bit extra room in, in uh, the building so that if you have a bubble here, you know, one grade's larger, we've got population moving through, you can absorb that uh, into your classrooms. So um, what we then did was um, currently, uh, so the average across the, build, uh, the buildings is about 101% capacity. We were also looking, um, if you did bring MSA into the building, that, that compounded the project probably by adding another 139 students, so it took up capacity of 106 percent. What we looked at was by bringing Steel Elementary on online, we bring the overall capacity of the district down to 92 percent. Um, so, right, essentially that right side, by bringing one more elementary school online, we're right size of the district uh, was the discussion. Okay, and again, as you can see, PD recommends 85 to 90 percent uh, capacity. So we, we'd sort of be at the max end of that. Um, and, and there's also a little bit of movement also that exists in the district um, where you have your learning support, your special education throughout some of the buildings. So a combination of bringing Steel Elementary on, online as well as how you organize some of your learning support and even out that capacity of, of roughly the 85 to 90 percent. So, um, 
as well as doing the overall study of looking at enrollment, we had a number of pieces of evaluating uh, Steel Elementary over the last year. And what we started to, to look at was, unfortunately, when Steel Elementary was closed, um, the building really wasn't prepared uh, to be uh, closed for an extended amount of time period. So uh, this is an example uh, of really one of the existing classrooms. Uh, everything was still in it. Um, Ceilings were, ceilings were installed. It was going to be difficult for contractors to potentially come in and understand uh, what, they, what uh, level of renovation was going to occur. Another classroom, uh, one of the classrooms that was actually more cleared out. And um, so we started having a discussion of how could we clear out and prepare the building for construction to get optimal pricing from contractors. And part of that was there was a lot of unforeseens of they did, you know, how were they going to get all, all of the uh, materials out of the building, expose ce above ceiling so the contractors could see exactly what they, was occurring. As well, um, we were looking at the exterior of the building for window replacement, uh, brick masonry restoration and cleaning, uh, as well as the site, campus. Um, modernizing playground equipment uh, for safety and security, replacing fencing, just reorganizing uh, the whole, the whole uh, site campus, as well as parking around the rear of the building uh, we, we we're addressing. And this is the, the back of the building. Um, this photo is probably uh, not just with um, the layout of the building, but one of the discussions we had was I mentioned earlier that the whole building is essentially a classroom and there's not really time for learning support. And so one of the things that the district challenged was how could we add some capacity so that we could have special education classrooms, a small group instruction breakout for learning support, and as well as um, how could we have a separate cafeteria and gym. And what we started to look at was around the rear of the building, if we could infill, infill this sector and have a three-story addition, we could increase the capacity, have, have those additional uh, 21st century components of, of education, uh, but not have a large addition around the front of the building and lose the play space for the children. So uh, we prepared documents, and essentially for the last three months, uh, we received bids, the uh, board approved, we moved forward with construction, and now what we're, we're uh, nearing completion really in the next week or two, uh, that the entire building has been cleared out, ceilings have been taken down, uh, so that when the, the next group of contractors bid the project, which we we're actually starting this Thursday, uh, they'll be able to come in and essentially understand exactly what uh, they're bidding on. Essentially what we've done is created the build, turned the school into a shell package, a little bit like if you would have a, a business you go into uh, somebody rents a building for a business, you go in and the structure and the shell of the building's there and then we will, will be inserting uh, the new construction. An example classroom's been fully cleared out. It's ready for the contractors uh, to come in. Uh, that's also going to make it advantageous. spring of 2022 20, uh, and what you can see is the blue for the classrooms but then uh, the green is what I spoke of how could we insert small group instructions SGIs special education which are the SEs and sort of intersperse those throughout the building so that you easily have some access uh, from classrooms to, on each floor of the building and then we also looked on uh, the first floor how could we add a cafeteria a full serving kitchen, and then on the second floor, a music, art, and then additional classrooms on the third floor. And using that, uh, that approach, then that was approved by the district, and then uh, really for the last six plus months, we've been proceeding on the final construction documents. We, we just completed that last week uh, for, uh, for bidding over the next month. 
and you can see the full detail. Uh, now you've got what was the multi-purpose space will now be a dedicated gym with a stage, new cafeteria across the main public corridor, a very clear uh, entry to the building with security so that somebody buzzes in, has to come into administration before then they have the ability to go back out to the school. Both administration and nurses, nurse suite is all located at one location. Um, Pre-kinder and kinder classrooms on the first floor, as well as learning support and special education. Moving up to the second floor, um, media center at the core of the building, and the idea was to have that on the second floor so students are either for your core program only going up or down one, one story on a regular basis, and having your both your library media center at the core, along with art and music, flanking them at the center. And then again, uh, the blue is core classroom, so first grade house, second grade house, along with special education, and two small group instructions. And then moving to the third floor would be the third, fourth, and fifth grade houses, and uh, along with small group instruction breakout spaces, two of them flanking each other. We kept special education on the first and second floor just for ease and accessibility. And then um, also reevaluating the entire site redoing the parking around the back, the addition, and really we're, we're reorganizing all the playgrounds, resurfacing all, uh, the entire surf, or all the play spaces, replacing sidewalks, uh, new parking, and new fencing, as well as uh, new drop-offs. And then as I mentioned briefly, um, centralizing uh, the art, music, and um, a media center. And then also creating those groupings, those uh, plant, those sort of great pods, but also the support of the small group instructions and special education. These are just some globes, slides we've seen previously. And then really working out uh, all the layout with, with staff of exactly how everything from furniture to casework, cabinetry in, in the spaces, exactly how does the office suite uh, interact to support the building, how do visitors come in um, and then enter back out to the building. We looked at safety and security, how do we lock down sectors of the building so that you know the public can come into the, that center core with the gym and the cafeteria but not have access to the classrooms. So there will, there's a series of down doors throughout the building. Okay, so um, these are the final renderings um, for the building. And what we're trying to do is keep with the historic character of the building. It was part of the reason that we had filled the back, sort of uh, it, filling in the U, the, the center the U on the back of the building. And what that allowed us to do is not have to modify the historic nature of the building. In fact, what we're trying to do is restore the original character of the building. Um, both masonry restoration on the exterior, we're going with um, a window that has, is more of a historic uh, character to it, same cost range as a typical modern aluminum window, but being more, more respectful to the history of the building. And then we also have a small addition for the administration. Uh, so this will be the new entry with the ability of the reception to be not able to monitor anybody approaching the building. And that was something, a concern was, before people were either parking around the back or at this location, but then you were really having to walk around to come in an entry on the front uh, face of the building. And we're removing that canopy to again restore the, his, the original character of the building. And then stepping around to the back of the building and filling that U. So this is the existing building, essentially this line here and here and we're infilling this three-story core right here. So on the first floor, it, it, simple mechanical rooms, kitchen, cafeteria at the center core, and then music, art classroom on the second floor, and then two additional classrooms up on the third floor. Uh, part of the reason the cafeteria is a two-story space is 
we're trying to have views through the library so that you, even though the library is at the center of the building, you'll have views to the exterior. So you'll sort of, you'll be looking through the cafeteria. And that's just zooming in. Um, because of the proximity of the parking on the back of the building, uh, we also uh, have a series of stone benches, limestone benches, that both for somebody to sit on, but really safety and security, it stops somebody from, you know, um, God forbid that you know somebody would try to drive into the building, they won't be able to do that. Uh, this is coming in. Uh, you've just entered through the main entrance of the building, you've gone through reception, and what we're trying to do is create very clear wayfinding for it, for somebody uh, moving throughout the building. So it's not a matter of saying, well, to get to that part of the building, you need to take a left and then two rights. Um, that you come in the main entrance and there's a very distinct main corridor, and then to the left is the gym, and to the right is the cafeteria. Essentially, your two main public spaces that people that would not know the building really well would be coming to on a regular basis. Uh, we also have a lot of glazing between the gymnasium and the cafeteria. Um, that is both for staff visibility, so that uh, administration as well as teachers can move move through the building very quickly and be monitoring monitor, multiple spaces so that if something's occurring for safety and security, not only if you might have a, a scenario of um, a, essentially um, a police event at the building, but really, more importantly, on a regular basic basis, bullying in the building, that your staff can monitor all spaces on that very quickly throughout the building. Um, I would also note, uh, this is laminated safety glazing uh, in the event that something would happen. Uh, and then this is stepping out of that corridor that we were just in, and now you're in the, the gymnasium. So again, um, this is the music classroom on the second floor, art, art classroom right above, and then this is the media center that'll be looking through the cafeteria to the exterior of the building, get natural, uh, natural daylight views into the center core of the building, and then just opening that space. Um, and then this is more of a, a sort of a, a detail, but we're running the mechanical systems through this lowered ceiling area right here. Moving up to the second floor, very similar concept. You'll have views down into the gymnasium, space for the students. So views through the building, really trying to open that up and make it, so it, it, right now you've got some really dark corridors in the building. Um, so really trying to constantly have views to the exterior and brighten the building up. And then also views into the media center for that space. And then that the librarian essentially can be monitored, not only the library, but essentially this whole center core of the building and not having to have additional staff. And then moving up to the third floor, um, it's not quite as open really because uh, we don't have any you know, media center or gyms, cafeteria, um, but a similar concept, you bring some of the natural daylight from the exterior windows of the building. Um, something else we're doing at thir the third, fourth, and fifth grades is um, we are actually moving the student cubbies out to the hallway and, and creating additional space in the classroom for education. Really trying to maximize all space throughout the building. A view of the, the media center, so both the views to the hallway, out into the cafeteria, and then to the exterior. So that is uh, sort of moving quickly th through the final renderings of the building. And then uh, total, total project budget. This is something that we developed very early, but uh, the overall budget is at $21.6 million. Uh, the district's been holding this. Uh, and I think the whole team, we've really been watching that very closely throughout the project. So project schedule. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we really, we, even though the main project is, is about to bid, we've really been in construction for the last three months. Since uh, September 13th, we started the, the uh, um, actually in September, the full bids for the selective demolition were completed. Um, October, November, December, we've been doing the lion's share of demolition. We'll be wrapping up in the next two weeks. And uh, design documents were completed uh, in the fall. 
We're currently bidding the project this month. It'll be about a month worth of, of bidding the project for contractors. And then the anticipation is we would present and hopefully bids would be approved by the school district uh, in February, which would allow us to start construction in March to July of 2024 with the school being ready to open August of 2024. So we're, we're talking about, what is that, about a year and eight months uh, until the building would be ready uh, to be fully occupied. Okay. With that, that's uh, the overall presentation. Eric, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Jeff. If you can just go back one slide. All right, so you know, what are, what are we going to do next? So we're going to have to start to have some discussion about boundaries. Um, anytime you talk about boundaries, um, it's an emotional topic uh, because at that point in time, you would be looking at potentially moving kids out of their current school and they would have to go to a different school. Uh, so that is not going to be an easy conversation to have, uh, but it's going to be one that we're going to have to have. Uh, so in order to do so, you're going to have to move students from one location and start to move students to the Steel Elementary area. So that is something that's going to have to be done. When you're looking at staffing, uh, the staffing piece at this point is you know, you're going to have your administrative cost. So potentially bringing on a new principal, potentially if you're going to bring on an assistant principal, um, if you need to bring on another guidance counselor, if you need to bring on another social worker. But from looking at the teaching staff, when you start to shift students to that area, you'll be shifting staff. Um, so if, if, as an example, if Melrose has 500 and some students, Melrose gowns down to 350 students, what you would be doing is looking at the number of the staff members needed at Melrose in order to provide instruction, the number of staff members who would need to shift. So a lot of these conversations we obviously need to have early on so people know exactly what to expect you know, moving forward and getting ready for the 2024 school year. Um, the one thing with this project is we hope there's going to be a level of excitement for what we think schools should look like in Harrisburg. Um, the one thing that we had discussion on uh, when we saw the rendering is there was such a level of excitement with the team looking at a school for a Harrisburg student to have some pride in when they walk in each and every day. And how can we have discussion about taking this as a model and start to have all of our buildings look like this. So all of our students, when they walk into school, feel good about where they go to school. Because um, right now, I don't think they do as much. Um, we've, we've sent out surveys and we've got some information from students and um, when it comes to a facility standpoint, um, kids do not wake up, walk into a building and feel 100% great about where they go to school. So how can we take this and say, let's replicate this and start to look at other buildings, Ben Franklin, Melrose, all of our buildings, to get to a point where our kids walk into school and feel good about where they go to school and what their school looks like. Because the environment is very, very, very critical and key. So that's kind of our road show this morning. We definitely wanted to get the ball rolling and start having some conversation. Uh, I mean, we know this project will come to fruition about a year and a half from now, um, but we wanted to have the conversation early, and we know it's gonna be a conversation that we're gonna have to look and have often, uh, because there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle that we are gonna we really need to spell out over the next 18 months. Um, we, we, we want to open school successfully in August of 2024. In order to do that, we are gonna have to have a lot of meetings, a lot of conversation of what that's gonna look like before we get to that point. All right, so um, let's kind of very quickly recap. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of throw a couple things out as my parting shots is, you know, I really hope uh, that, you know, as you walk out of here tonight, you know, there's a little bit of a level of excitement in terms of potentially where the district's going and moving forward. Uh, I know I'm very excited in terms of um, 
being here for a year and a half and starting to see things starting to come to fruition. Small pieces, but it's still moving the district forward. Um, one position that is going to be coming out very soon, uh, and I kind of talked about this and it's kind of kind of tying together is uh, we are going to be looking for the best candidate possible as a director of early learning. So we talked specifically about how this move potentially would be able to open things up so we now can really aggressively go after our early scholars. Um, that is something in Harrisburg has to be a priority. Has to be a priority. We can't have discussions about improving things if we are not really going to be ready to start to tackle birth and we're going all the way up to second grade. There needs to be a, an aggressive approach to what is happening before our kids get into kindergarten and then once they get there, getting into third grade. So that definitely is going to be a district priority moving forward. Uh, so that position will be coming out at some point in time within the next month. Uh, we are definitely going to aggressively find the right person uh, for our district and for this community uh, because that person is going to have a lot of work to do to bring everyone together in terms of what's occurring before kids get to school. So I do appreciate some of the feedback. Um, you know, thinking it through now, you know, we probably should have thought about location. I think when we talked, we were trying to get as close as we could to residents at Steele. But, you know, just listening to everyone's feedback now, you know, one of our next steps will be how can we get into our elementary schools to do the same type of presentation. So that makes very good sense moving forward. So we're going to really think through um, what was discussed tonight, and then we'll kind of circle back within the next week or two and say, all right, here's some next steps that we're doing, because we need to make sure we keep everybody engaged in this conversation. This can't be a, yeah, you hear from me in July. This has to be an ongoing conversation to let everybody know where we're at. So I do appreciate the feedback because there was a couple of things that were mentioned tonight that honestly was not on our radar. And uh, we really need to make it a priority to make sure we get to the residents who are around that area. We're gonna have to figure out what our means are to make sure we're able to do that, to make sure we grab those residents and let them really specifically know what's going on. So I appreciate everyone this evening coming out. Um, and I look forward to moving the project forward and seeing you in the future. Um, you're more than welcome to come to any meeting we have about it, with the exception of you. You're not allowed to come anymore, right? <laughs> so, but uh, do appreciate the feedback. At the end of the day, we're not gonna move this district forward unless we work together as a team. We can't do it in isolation. No one is gonna come in here with a cape and solve it, but if we collectively as a whole know what the goal is and we collectively as a whole work together, we can start making Harrisburg a better place for our kids. So, appreciate you coming out this evening and look to talk to you soon. Thank you.